me now? I'm just trying to make sure. Yes. 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 Okay. How come Ed's on there twice? Special. Because my computer, can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> my computer was having problems, so I went to my cell phone. I have my computer open, but I have it muted. That's fine. That's good. Some people are doing that, yes. I think 6.30, Joey, you want to start? Are we ready, Simon? Yes, 6.30, yes, we're ready. Great. Okay, first of all, good evening to everybody. It's so nice to see you all and be together again. Uh, let's call the meeting to order. Time now is 6.30 p.m. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Simon for joining us. She is along the way. Thank you so much for, for being here with us. Uh, the first uh, I'd like to do is stand and uh, recite the Pledge of Allegiance. Will you all stand, please? Will we recite that? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. 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 Thank you very much. <clears throat> all right. First item on our agenda is oh, first of all, Liz, I don't see you, but Liz, you're here, right? I'm here. Would you record, please, all those in attendance, which I think it's a... Uh, yes, like I, I have a list. Thank, Thank you. you. Great. First item on our agenda is public comment. If we have any uh, interest to publicly comment, we ask that you use the chat feature. I see that some of you have on the bottom, and we will do our best to uh, answer those. Um, let's see if I can put them on. Uh, and it looks like uh, we are good. Looks like it's just that. So again, we have to use that feature, and we'll do the best we can to to answer your questions or your comments. Uh, next is presentations correspondence. We have Kayla Lipinski, who is an Eagle Scout uh, candidate with us. Um, he would like to present his ideas for his Eagle Scout project. And I'm not sure is Brian White. Yes, thank you, Brian. Brian White, uh, his scoutmaster, is with us as well. Caleb, okay, welcome, and the floor is yours. I'm going to share my screen for the presentation, okay? Can everyone see this? Thanks, guys. Yes. yes. Okay, good. All right. Thank you. Okay. So for my Eagle Scout project, um, I want to build chess tables. Um, Uh, like I said, I want to build chess tables for one of the parks um, the park rank has ordered from. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, I have two designs for, the, or two options that we could go with for my build. We could go with the small tables, um, or next slide. or one of the jumbo boards uh, shown here. Uh, next slide. Uh, now for the chess tables, um, I expect the cost to be around $650. And I plan on making probably three of them. The materials, is, um, I plan on making um, the boards out of cement, but have a wood stand and wood chairs. Um, and then also have the tables uh, cemented into the ground. Uh, next slide, please. Um, for the big board, the actual board wouldn't be as much. It would be around $300, except for the pieces, which are probably going to be around $375 to $500, unless we hand make them. And then it's optional to have benches on both sides. Uh, the location for this one would be a lot more um, 
dependent on or location I get to build this because it will be around 400 square feet. Um, but it will also get more usage because it's the size makes it a lot more um, attractive. And to help determine whether to go with this board or the smaller boards, we would need to think about how much they're going to get used. Next slide, please. Um, location and maintenance. Um, I would prefer, or um, I think the best spot to build this, these boards is Kingdom or the Town Beach, or the Cadden Park uh, would be another one. Because, um, but at Kingdom, it would get more usage since it's open longer than the Town Beach. And then for the small boards maintenance, we need to check um, the checkers for chess pieces in a checkout system. Um, and if they were at the town beach, we could do it like the basketball system where people walk up to a little bar and check things out. Or people could bring their own pieces and play with those. With the big board, we would need to, um, we would need to find a place to store the big pieces where we could take them out during the day and then store them during the night. Um, and then what I expect from Mrs. Knox, the supervisor, as well as the town park, to help determine a location or if there's any changes I need to do to this project, to the design for the maximum usage, help determine a storage space for the pieces and optional checkout, um, and then items during the project and maybe ongoing maintenance after a few years when I'm not around. Um, and then, does anyone have any questions? Thank you, Julia. Uh, we're gonna use the feature as we talked about, or I sent um, her protocol in my email. I can see most of you, if anyone has any questions or comments for Caleb, those that I can see can raise their hand. Uh, Ed and um, I guess it's just Ed could um, use the hand raise on this one. Does anyone have questions? Rob? Uh, I just had a question, you know, I agree with um, the locations of Kids Kingdom or the Town Beach. And um, for the large one, one of the, if we went with that, one of the good locations, the Town Beach would be obvious because you can check out the pieces. But I'm also thinking of the um, concerts, the Friday night concerts. That might be a cool thing to be doing at the same time. It was a statement. It wasn't a question. It was, what do you guys think? Thanks for the addition. Anybody else? Ed has, Ed. Ed has a question. Mean? Yeah. Um, how are you, Caleb? I'm good. How are you? Very good, sir. Um, when you get the OK for this, how long would you think it would take from the start to the completion? Um, maybe one or two weeks. Probably okay. The maximum of or Mr. White is giving me the no, so probably a month or so. Yeah, well, Mr. White yeah. has done this before. You know, you have weather yeah. and other things that come up. So yeah. at least a month, you think, Caleb and Brian? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Isn't it going to take a month to get approval from council of the project once you submit it? It'll take a few weeks for that. But then when he gets off and running, it'll probably take uh, four to six weeks, I think, for end to end. You got to worry about the getting and securing the material, Caleb. So that's, we'll mm -hmm. work on that separately. Okay. okay. I think Renee, Thank you. Brian, if you don't mind, I think Renee had her hand up earlier. Renee? Go right ahead, Renee. Quick question. Hi, Caleb. How are you, honey? Um, good. How are you? Good. Have you considered possibly, or maybe the commission we can consider together, the possibility of using some space near the senior center? Because I think this would be a really great idea for seniors, given that they're probably really vested in playing chess or checkers, and that can take them outdoors on the senior center on a nice day or 
together with some of their friends as well as maybe younger people. So if you were looking to do three small tables, maybe do two small tables or even one small table by the senior center and then a large table by the beach so that you could do both locations. This way, if people wanted to check out the small pieces, they could just check them out at the senior center and the large pieces would be at the beach. Mm -hmm. Because at the beach, you can also use people yeah. as pieces. <laughs> like that would that might be fun for kids, though. You know what I mean? Just a different twist on what you were going with. I know that probably just threw a crux in your plan. Yeah. But... Um, as well as I forgot to add um, for the storage for the big um, tables behind the benches, we could build boxes to store the pieces that could be locked up. Uh, I forgot to add that within my presentation. Um, so, sorry. That's another idea for storage. Thanks, Caleb. Brian? Uh, Caleb, great job putting this together. Nice job, nice job. Uh, you presented us two options. Which one would you prefer? Which one you know intrigues you the most? I think, um, the big board would definitely be um, much more manageable, um, but as well as it would get a lot more attention and usage. So I think um, as well as the pieces aren't going to get lost or stolen um, because they're big. Um, so I really think this one would be the best option. But again, since it's the size is so big, it's kind of hard to find a stop to put it. Kearney's view. I have a comment for you, Caleb. I would lean a little bit towards the table. I, I have a little bit of a concern for the size of the big, the big board. And I do have a little bit of a concern for the pieces. Um, you know, the small tables, whether it's the Cadigan or the Senior Center, which I think is an excellent idea, those pieces not only can be stored somewhere, but also residents can bring the pieces with them easily. You know, if they brought their kids over to Cadigan or so forth. Um, let's say if, you know, Cadigan or the senior center or some other location wasn't open, you know, it's very easy to bring those pieces. I, I worry about how we would get the pieces, even in a locked box, uh, just to break that might cause some extra complication. Um, anybody have thoughts about, about that? I have uh, the same thoughts. Um, you want to make it easy and usable. And I don't know, Mary, do you have a, a large chess set? We do. I bought a large set. We pull it out on special occasions. It, you know, it costs like four or $500 at least, but it's, on a, it's not on a nice board like he would make. But one of the things about chess, I've played chess at these public uh, chess boards a couple of times. In the city, they have a whole bunch of them in Greenwich Village, and, and there's some in Central Park, and you always see a group of people. It's not always just one. It'd be great if you had like two by the senior center and two by another location, because people tend to like play, I'll play winner. You have two couple of games going on, slightly apart, but it's sort of a social thing. It's not just the chess, you know, part of it. Just mm -hmm. a thought. Mm -hmm. Caleb, if you were given approval, conditional approval to move ahead, how much um, do you see Parks and Rec um, getting involved in, uh, you know, approving concepts specifically large or small down the road? Are you looking, in other words, for us to approve tonight size or just the overall idea? Um, I would like to get an idea of the location that I could use. Um, and then depending on that, we could go with either size or option. So, so actually, so Caleb, we could actually move forward with both concepts. Pick one right now that you guys like. We can move forward with that, but you can change that. So if you guys okay. come back later, even though we've had the project approved, we can do modifications that you approve and you want to win the project. So you are not locked in to one or the other right now. 
right now. Okay. Mary, can can you give us your thoughts since you will you you know the parts better than we do, where where something would be appropriate or not. <clears throat> I hope so. There we go. Um, I hope I can give you my thoughts now. Um, so uh, I had a lovely conversation with Caleb, and he is certainly very well organized, and I give him a lot of credit for coming and doing the Zoom meeting today because I'm sure when I were was a high school uh, student, this would be very challenging for me. So for that alone, I think he's uh, he should be commended. Um, in terms of the different parks that we have, you know, the different sizes would, would be better suited to different locations. Um, and I, I agree with Renee. The senior center idea kind of went through my head a little bit too. They do have an outdoor patio. I'm not sure how much additional space they have at that patio or if it would have to be outside of that boundary, but that might be something to give some thought to. But, but naturally, when we think of where people congregate and spend a lot of time and sit down, you think about, you know, Kids Kingdom especially is one of those parks in town that people tend to sit and stay for a while. Um, I would say the same thing about Cadigan Park, and, and I mentioned to Caleb last week as well like, um, for selfish motivations that we do have a lot of programs that run out of Cadigan. Um, our camps run out of there in the summer. We have a lot of sport usage there, too, with siblings looking for things to do. So having something there for, for those purposes, I think, make a lot of sense. So, so if somebody said to me, well, Mary, what, where are the, the top locations? I would really say uh, between Cadigan and, uh, and Kids Kingdom and the Senior Center would be where I would see them working the best if we're talking about the small tables. Great. Any other questions or comments, concerns, et cetera? Tom? You made it. We hear Tom well. You got to take yourself off mute. Yeah. Can anyone hear Tom? No, lower left, Tom. On the screen, lower left, you'll see mute, unmute. Tom, let me see. I, I'm mute. I'm muting you now, Tom. Go ahead. Can you hear me now? Yes. 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 Okay. All right. I don't know what happened to the button. Uh, no. What's the size of the large chess board? What? What? Uh, how much the chess board. Um, I'm thinking about. 400 square feet. How much? 400 square feet, so 20 by 20. Okay, all right, thank you. Thanks. Okay. Any other questions? Do we feel comfortable making a motion tonight for Caleb to move forward? Obviously, we further consent and approval on specific design and location by the commission. Are we comfortable doing that? Raise your hand if doesn't, you are. Doesn't he need some specifics in order to make right. a proposal? How many boards, what specific locations? And when would he like it by? For the Eagle Project paperwork, he can put in a proposal for, say, I've heard four, and you talked about three. If he puts down four as a proposal, he can put down location 2BD. So that'll be okay. I'll work with him on the Eagle project side of it and getting council to approve that. And now you, there is an option for changes after the project proposal is approved. So you can go forward with just the approval on small four tables, location TBD. It can always come back as one large if we just do the paperwork appropriately. And what would you see the time frame, Brian, for needing to know specifically that if we if we make a motion tonight and approve a go ahead, what time frame would you need for more decisions, for tighter decisions? It would just be a motion. You you probably work through about a month with the council, and by that point, if you guys can then start making final decisions, he can then continue on with project planning. Okay, I'm comfortable with that. Um, would anyone like to? Is there any other comments, questions? Would someone like to make a motion? So I'm sorry, one question would be, <laughs> are, are we comfortable with the number of four? Is that a good number or is four? I definitely would prefer four rather than three, but four or five seems like the perfect 
number to be flexible about location. What do you guys think? Are we specifically talking about the uh, small ones now? Are we taking the large one off the table? I was thinking that, but what do other people think? One by one to 10. What do we, uh, I'll kind of, again, just add, I can't see. Okay, I, I would prefer that we lean towards the small tables and I have no problem with making a motion for him to start, for Caleb to start um, the procedure and then we can tell him the locations when we discuss it later. Okay, thank you, Ed. Everyone else I can see, would you raise your hand if you want the larger board? Okay. Well, raise your hand if you would like to make a motion or if somebody would make a motion. Um, again, there's much that we might even fit another meeting in there to tighten down. Um, I'll make a motion. Possible. I'll make a Thank motion you. that we approve him moving forward with his Eagle project for four smaller chess boards with benches. That would be great. So, a second. Thank you, Kathy. Kathy, second. All those in favor, uh, we can probably do a hand vote. And Ed, uh, if you would just weigh in. I say yes, and I just clicked yes. So when you say raise your hand, I don't know if you mean visually or press the, <laughs> the icon. Press the icon, I think, yeah. Yeah, I think that's yes. what we well, but, but because, Ed, just to simplify it for you, we can all see each other. We just right. can't yeah. see you. So if you'd like to weigh in with your voice, that's fine, too. Right. So, I, so it's I a I yes. Saw, thank you, Ed. If I saw correctly, motion carries unanimously. Can I make a motion that the Easter Bunny gets a hand somewhere in there? <laughs> all right, very good. Liz, you have that? <laughs> yes, I do. Thank you, Liz. Okay, moving on. Okay, Liz, thank you very, very much. Good luck. We'll, we'll all thank be you. in touch. Um, Good luck with your project. Thank yeah. you, Caleb. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Hi, Brian? Yes. I have one question for you. Does Logan learn the technology expertise from you, or is it the other way around? Uh, I am in IT. I know. I'm just kidding you. You take care. Thanks. Thank Talk you later. Yeah. Thank you guys. All right. Moving along, uh, the next agenda item is director's report. Mary, you're up. So it's almost going to be the quietest report ever. <laughs> Everybody, I think I'm back on here. Okay. Um, so thank you all for, for taking some time to um, hear about Caleb's ideas. I just love the idea that we can all talk about it and give him guidance. I think it's, it's a lot better to have lots of people's ideas in on, on the Eagle Scale projects as opposed to just one. So in, in the past, many years ago, um, it, it was very common for the Eagle Scouts to come in and for things to be held, handled at the department level. But I really, uh, I really love the idea of getting um, you know, lots of people in on the process. So thank you for that. Um, I'm going to cheat a little bit. You're going to see me looking down here at some of my notes for the director's report because lots of lots has been happening the past few weeks in the past couple of months. But just to give you probably the, the most important update is that by now, we often have our spring and summer programs out and are busy taking registrations. And so we made the decision purposefully uh, back at, in the middle of March that we were going to hold and not give out any information until we had a much better idea of what our spring and summers were going to be looking like. And so um, we still don't really have enough information to put anything out, but just know that that was a, that was a decision that was made, and I think it was the right decision, um, you know, as opposed to having information out there that was then having to be corrected and recorrected. Um, but we are going to be prepared to, to start advertising programs um, when, when appropriate, and hopefully that will happen um, in, in months or weeks as opposed to longer times than that. Um, a little bit of an idea about what happened on the recreation side is that starting on March 12th, uh, programs really abruptly halted. 
and then we were busy uh, issuing refunds and canceling any other program that was scheduled to begin after that point. So we spent a lot of our time early on in uh, working just with refunds and administrative tasks like that. Um, the Parks Department has been very different in terms of operations over the over the past several weeks in that uh, you know the grass still grows the the trees still fall and um, and and parks has had more of a normal spring than you would really expect for for us to be having on parks and so we've been uh, keeping up with tasks and you know getting our seasonal water system started back up again mowing is starting officially this week and um, We've also been trying to take any reasonable steps to prepare our facilities that we can open so that way when we do get the restrictions lifted that we're actually ready to, to hit the ground running. Um, so know that a lot of behind the scenes work has been going on and, and in speaking with Chris, he'll tell you that, um, that the spring feels, feels very much like every, any other spring with the exception of the, of the playing fields and, um, and people out and enjoying them. Um, but we've um, been spending you know, a lot of our time also researching and uh, trying to be ahead and maybe even a little bit of ahead of the curve um, when facilities reopen with processes that we might need to have in place for the short term at least uh, in order to maintain people's safety. So that's been going on for the park side too. Um, on, a, on a really kind of positive note, we had talked many uh, months ago about putting some turf blankets down and we talked about how that's going to have to help the grass or the sod grow a little bit more effectively over the winter months and um, soccer club was very generous and actually purchased turf blankets for us to use and we put them down back in December I believe and if anybody has the chance to go down to Lower Patak uh, and take a look for yourselves you can actually see the difference in the grass areas it's like a T on either side of the Lower Patak field that you can tell where the grass blankets had been or where the turf blankets had been so it was certainly a successful enterprise for us and one that we hope to replicate there and perhaps on other locations going forward too. Um, and that's just a little little taste about everything that's been going on between our office and uh, parks and recreation. Thanks, Mary. Anybody have comments, questions for Mary? Again, if you wouldn't mind raising your hands, if I can see you or Ed, you can tell us. Rob? Yeah, um, it's great that you had the turf blankets and it's great that nobody's going to be on the fields so you can... Um, benefit it's almost like you got a rest of a field which you never could do um, yes so that's great um i had a question about the uh, uh two questions one is uh the staffing with your up in the air about summer camp and the beach have you sent a letter out uh being suitably vague saying we're not sure what we can do or what have you done regarding that staffing Certainly. So um, at this point in time, um, our normal procedure is that we send out intent to return forms to our returning staff and a lot of different recreation departments do. So right now we've received those intent to return forms back. Um, even with those, we always say that the schedule on them is subject to change. We're not really ever sure when the last day of school is going to be and so many of our programs and the beach operations are based on that. So, um, so we have been, you know, in communication with some of our, our summer staff right now, um, anybody who's checked in, basically telling them that, you know, we're, uh, we're waiting to see when restrictions are going to be lifted in order for us to be able to uh, open up the, the beach um, and, you know, camp right now um, with the minimum numbers right now for groups uh, five. Um, we really need to, to wait a little bit longer until we see what that looks like, and then we can make some decisions about um, if we're going to be able to safely operate camps under the restrictions and at a reasonable cost for people to be able to afford to send their children. Um, so um, that's, that's really where we're at right now. So we haven't sent out any official employment forms, um, but we, we will be doing that, and we do have our employees who are, are ready and willing to work once we can. Excellent. And I... We're, I assume we're going to cover like the trail and the track and stuff a little bit later, right? We can certainly uh, speak to those items maybe under the COVID response for the departments under mm -hmm. under new business if that's reasonable. I, I think that's probably the best place. 
because there's probably a lot of questions there. Anybody else have any questions for Mary? Yeah, excuse me. This is Dami. I have a, I have some issues. You know why? Because you know, um, our board of finance meeting was scheduled last week, and then we scheduled a parking rent meeting lately. They have a meeting. They want to start seven o'clock. End up they couldn't start because we already on first. <laughs> Steve. Oh. Steve, Steve said, "Oh my goodness, can we can we just sp speed up our meeting?" I'm just so sorry because the other meeting couldn't start because if they start, they're gonna we're gonna all of a sudden we're gonna leave the meeting. <laughs> they just, just email me, email me say, "Tommy, hurry up." <laughs> okay. You got five minutes, Mary. All right. <laughs> yeah. We can just know. table and go. It's, we have three accounts. Somehow we we use the same account, schedule the two meetings. You know, this but anyway, we have conflict right now. So hope we can get pro program. understood. Are you Sorry, saying that yeah. you just that she just needs to go monitor the meeting and leave hours with that? No, they easier? couldn't start the border no, no. finance meeting. That's <laughs> seven o'clock border finance meeting, you know. I, I said, sorry. wait, we had 20 minutes, we should be done soon, but they want to speed a little bit. I'm sorry. That's fine. We can move along as best we can. Anybody else have questions for Mary? I'm sure she's going to cover a lot more when we get, um, you know, down to um, old business and new business. Are we, are we good for the director's report? Move along? Yes. Thank you, guys. Uh, monthly financials, Mary? Okay, so for our monthly financials, um, all of the all of the lines are solid right now. Um, we are in good financial shape as a department. The one line that we continue to watch is our seasonal line uh, for seasonal part time. Um, as we all know, we had an employee who went out on um, medical leave at the end of October who has not yet returned, and so we've been supplementing that position with seasonal. Um, but everything right now is in good shape, and we expect to end the fiscal year in good shape. Perfect. Questions? Let's move along. Um, Ed, you can hear us, right? Ed, you'll, you'll shout out if you have questions. Yes, I can, or I will hit raise my hand. Great. Thank you. Old business. Old so old for old business, the uh, Still River Greenway Town Hall Extension, just to give a quick update, um, we were uh, going to see if we could get additional uh funding needed in order for the project to move forward for construction to happen over the spring or excuse me over the summer um, and uh, right now the the money has already been taken out of capital for this next year so the project will not be touched for this year so just to give an update this is something that's going to be on uh, tabled for the time being okay. Let's do that. Okay. I'll have Mary go on with the other two agenda items under old business and then we'll ask for comments and questions that will help I think move too. So Mary, uh, Silver River Greenway gives you both. Certainly. So, um, so right now we have seven thousand dollars still in our capital um, budget, uh, and uh, the, that was uh, approved by the Board of Finance, and that is still going to be re-reviewed and and voted on and re-approved by June fourth, I believe. So, right now that seven thousand dollars remains. I think it's prudent for us to wait and see if that seven thousand dollars remains in June and to have further discussion at that time. Great. I'll be here before we know it. Uh, and then budget request for fiscal year, if you want to just address briefly what you think. Sir so I, I I did email out um, just the Park and Rec related pages a little bit earlier today, so everybody has a chance to look through them. Again, these are what was uh, approved, what were approved by the Board of Finance back in March. Again, Board of Finance is certainly going through again under their circumstances in the town and, and across the nation. So we'll know more June 4th, but as of as of today, this is what has already been approved um, for your review. And again, we can discuss further in June. Okay, and everybody. Can take a look at that. Um, but does anyone right now have a comment or question for Mary on any of these items? I have a single comment about the uh, fees for the beach, which I know what you sent out. They look I, great, especially with the um, um, minimum wage going up. And I was hoping. Uh, that... Can I interrupt you? Because I think that's coming up under new business. That's new business. We were trying to get off so the Board of Finance could begin. 
We are, but we, we just might have one or two, one thing ahead of that. Just hang okay. on one second with that. Uh, does anyone have any questions on the three items under old business or comments? Everybody good? Okay. okay. New business, Mary? Okay, so under um, the department COVID-19 response, so, you know, primarily um, Parks has been working in support of facility closures that have been necessary during these unprecedented times. And so uh, Parks has been um, signing and, um, and uh, removing items from Parks that make them more attractive. So the first few weeks were spent taking out nets and goals and taking off basketball hoops and locking up what we could. And it was a very different experience for our department, but very necessary for us to do. And as guidance has continued to evolve, we have been um, putting up signs or new signs based on the most current guidance to make sure that everybody in town is um, practicing, you know, safe social distancing and, and staying out of facilities as necessary. So as of right now, the town's position is that we want people out and enjoying open spaces as much as they can to go out hiking um, and maintain still that six foot distance. The town, you know, encourages families to go out together, people in the same household. Um, and, uh, and currently the track is also, uh, uh, you know, available for people to use and it's well signed now that masks are required in order to use the track, um, and that we're also asking people to practice social distancing, and we've also included guidance that if somebody comes to the track and it looks like it's not possible for them to join in and for others to still maintain social distancing, that we ask them to come back at another time. And we've been monitoring that, and so far we have not seen um, people uh, doing anything except for that. I swing by most often at least once a day and have seen you know, a group of maybe two or three different individuals uh, using the track, I think that our message is very, being very well received right now. Um, and uh, super quick to process. No, no, I was going to say, and, and just super quickly, I know Joey had sent out some information about the trail census um, from Connecticut Trail Census regarding the Greenway. Um, we saw those numbers. I mean, the use of the Greenway exploded during the month of March. And so the, the right decision was definitely made. And I think those numbers also give us some guidance as to how quickly we may or may not be able to reopen um, with if those numbers are going to come close to being the same when we do reopen. And so I think that's um, something the town's going to need to look a little bit um, carefully of in plans for reopening. Right. I just have one comment to make there. I, I know that, you know, some people may get on here or there lightly, but I think, again, I, it's important to look at the macro picture. Our goal was to go safely on there. We've, we've accomplished that. So. It's not our goal to target, you know, a small minority of folks that jump on there. So I, I think that the overall goal, goal was met, which is Absolutely. good. So the last item we have, uh, Rob, and it'll give you a chance to comment after, is the beach vote and tennis pass fees. Damin, I want to... Uh, just heard you, but this is the last item. So. Okay, I'll let her know, yes. <laughs> okay. Go ahead, Mary. Um, so I, I went ahead and I sent out the information for the for the beach and boat fa uh, fees yesterday, um, and um, minimum wage keeps going up every year. It's really time for us to do really a price adjustment this year, and I know it's never a good time, and this is an especially bad time to be doing any kind of price increases, um, but I, I do believe that they're very necessary at this time. So I, I'm hoping everybody had a chance to review what we are proposing um, so we could hopefully vote to approve and we can move forward with that information um, you know, in terms of being able to start selling passes when it's appropriate to do so. All right. Um, now we'll take comments and questions on that because I think, Mary, if I understood, you'll probably need a motion tonight to approve those. So does anyone, uh, Rob, why don't we start with you? I know you have questions. No, I thought, I thought that the um, chart was very relevant. Um, and I thought it was a good idea, even though the minimum wage is not kicking in till September of this year. But I was just hoping that we can raise the prices this year for this summer and then keep them steady next summer, even though it's going up every year. It'd be good if we could do it two years from now again. You're gonna have to, you know, basically. But I was anyway, that was just my hope, but I would vote in favor of the thing. Thank you, Rob. Anyone else? 
Tom, go ahead. What's the date usually that Palm Beach opens? Is it Memorial Day or the start of summer? It's generally Memorial Day weekend and weekends only until the last day of school. And then the last day of school, we start opening full time. Okay. So the only thing is, you know, it will probably, it will, won't open at the regular opening date. And you're going to be raising the prices at the same time. Are you going to prorate the rate for people? Like, you know, I could see people saying something, you know, it's not full, it's not going to be open until probably June, end of June, right? I'm saying, I'm thinking that right now. So um, one of my thoughts was that, um, and it was buried well, well done on the document, but there's been some, some discussion if it's time for us to start having some more standard hours across the board uh, every day of the week when we're in operation, as opposed to having later start times during, um, during the summer on Saturdays and Sundays. And so we were uh, thinking about trying going 10 to 6 this year across the board. So we'd actually be open more hours. Okay. Um, during our season, so it, it would offset even if we even if we get a later start, it's still going to offset um, the the longer hours every every month every week. Excuse me. Okay. Question: Renee? We we wouldn't consider reinstituting the senior pass fee to offset the cost of the, increasing the family pass. Yeah, I have that same thought. I mean, I don't want to be so, rude, but it's almost like a family's taking a hit where a senior, like, I'm just not sure why the senior is free. Certainly, I can tell you that we had we had tracked the number of senior passes that we had been selling prior to having them go uh, for free for seniors, and the amount or the number of passes we were selling is insignificant. Um, but what's happening now is that I think a lot more seniors are really using the park when there's no charge associated. We're we're talking about a couple of hundred dollars, honestly, Renee, in revenue that we're losing every year from not um, selling senior passes. At least by by 2016 price prices for those passes. So we're still not sure if we're going to open the beach, correct? Like so, we stuff. right we we don't know when. Um, we don't we don't have enough guidance yet um, to know when we're going to be able to open. Um, and again, you know, if if it turns out that we're not going to be able to open until well into the season, I think I think that we would want to come back as a group and and discuss if how we're going to prorate fees. I don't think it'd be reasonable to kind of sit here and say we can predict the future. But if we're able to open within a couple of weeks of of our normal opening date, I feel very comfortable with this fee structure. And if we're not, I think it's worth us coming back as a group to discuss. Any I apologize. I need to, we need to finance so they want to start a meeting. They will kick us off. Let's know. make a motion yeah. then. All right, make okay. Are, are we prepared to do that? I don't want to shut anyone out from having a, a comment or a question. I think we should go ahead and do it. It seems to make sense and we can adjust it after, later on down the line if we need to. Agree. That's my thinking too, Mary, is that we can start with the increase. If we get the pro rate, at least we have the increase in place. Mm -hmm. So I agree. Can I have a motion, please? I'll make a motion that we approve it and adjourn so we could save time. Thank you. So, I'll, I'll sorry. Second thank you. it. Yeah. I'll second. All those, in, all those a, a second, please. I'm sorry, Tom. Okay. All those in favor, raise your hand. And Ed, can we hear from you? Yep, I'm, I'm in favor. <laughs> okay. Motion carries unanimously. Here's the best motion you all love so much. Can I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Motion Renee? to adjourn. I already made that. Can I have a second? Motion Stop. to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Adjourn. OK, Thank see you. you next time. Hope see you all next time, you. OK? Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Talk to you again. Bye. Thank you, Damon. Yeah, thank you. Yeah,